She presses the button. The old clanky machinery begins to whir as the elevator approaches our floor. I grip her hand in something like panic. This is my first visit to the hospital. Mommy has been here for several weeks, but she refuses to see me. I've been staying with Grandma, which is nice, but I catch her crying sometimes, and it is very confusing. Is Mommy going to die? I ask her one day. No, no, says Grandma. She's not going to die. She just needs a rest because she's been unhappy. Is she mad at me? Grandma doesn't answer. She leaves the room. She is always leaving the room. Anyway, the elevator is arriving, and Grandma grabs the old-fashioned grated door and pulls it open, and we step into the tiny room that smells of bleach and sweat. It's a county psychiatric hospital, and that means misery. I can smell it, even if I don't fully understand it. It's written on the faces of the shabby people we passed hanging around the concrete steps we climbed to get through the old brick facade. I can see it in Grandma's tightly pressed lips and the handkerchief she keeps holding to her nose. The elevator jerks fiercely as it approaches the fifth floor. It shakes to a stop and Grandma opens the door and helps me over the not quite level threshold and into my mother's world. It doesn't look like a hospital. It's dusty. There are a lot of windows, very high, and the glass is kind of yellow and all grimy. There are bars in front of the windows. It's impossible to get close to them. The ceiling is very high. There's a lot of old-fashioned furniture, wooden chairs with high backs and ornate carving, artificial flowers, a few overstuffed couches, some very frayed carpets that look sort of oriental, but not at all like the carpets we have at home. The furniture isn't quite like home either. It's too old and dusty, and bits of it are falling off. The room seems very, very big, cavernous even. There are a few people sitting on the furniture, dressed funny in hospital gowns. One man is sitting in a hospital gown, and his legs are spread wide, exposing his flaccid, hairy penis. I have never seen an old man's penis, and Grandma notices that I look. She grabs my hand and pulls me away, muttering, don't stare, that man is sick. He doesn't look sick, I say, just tired and naked. Why is he naked? Never mind, says Grandma. Let's see if we can find out where your mother is. I get very quiet, because it is obvious to me that Grandma is using her I'm-in-control voice, and I know that means she will not tolerate any nonsense. Grandma never tolerates any nonsense, but sometimes she's more aggressive about it than others. This is one of those times. Thank you.